Hello. Hi. Take us in. No. Fine. No, <laughs> you go, Andrew, no, yes. you son of a bitch. It's Valentine's Day, and that means that I need to be pampered by you, Jackson. You know how our relationship works. Hello. Hey, hey welcome, welcome, welcome to the Valentine's Day special of the official podcast, because we're just coincidentally recording this episode on Valentine's Day. Uh, this is episode... I, I have no idea, 220? 220. Mm -hmm. So, boys... How much do you care about Valentine's Day? Uh, Fuck I'm, it. I like Valentine's Day. I think it's very important that we laugh at people that are lonely on it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think it's a cute holiday. But uh, I, I think Valentine's Day is one of those things you just absolutely forget about if you're single. And you only remember if you have a girlfriend or boyfriend. Oh, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even remember. I was in bed at like 3 a.m. fucking around on my phone. And it was like, oh, it's Valentine's Day, by the way. And I went, oh. So it is. I, no, I did not in any way charmer. remember. <laughs> Good for you. Oh, wait, you, wait, <laughs> wait, you, you girlfriend were... like, I, oh, it's your birthday today, right? No. <laughs> no, you, I mean, hang on. Birthdays are important. <laughs> Birthdays matter. But I don't know. Neither of us put any stock into Valentine's Day at all. Neither Good. of us really give a shit. But you, but you, said, you just said you didn't remember, but you did remember three hours into Valentine's Day if it was 3 a.m. So you had still had a full day to do things. No, no, it, it's today is Valentine's Day, right? I remembered at 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. last night. So yes. I guess hypothetically, if I wanted to last minute scramble to do something, I could. But I'm not going to because we don't care. <laughs> my well, my also point nothing with, you could do, to be fair. Yeah, my point with that was like, if I cared about Valentine's Day, I probably would have remembered or thought about it earlier, but I didn't even remember that it happens until like the day of. That's not mm. true. There's plenty of things that Andrew could have done. He could have asked for a blowjob. He could have. <laughs> true. Uh, yeah, I, I only ask on Valentine's Day. <laughs> plenty of things you could have done, I suppose. I didn't even stop to think about that. I was thinking more of going out somewhere, but I suppose staying inside you for blowjobs makes blow sense. Job? Yeah. Yeah. A nice outdoor Going out blow for a blowjob is always fun. That is yeah. pretty, that's pretty cool, actually, yeah. Have you guys ever had public sex? No, have Do you? Do blowjobs count? Oh. Do what? Blowjobs. Yeah, I mean, anything that... Receiving them, to be specific. <laughs> I guess, yes. <laughs> uh... Well, uh do, uh, like, parks count? Not parks, you know, like, uh, hiking trails count? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're well, still yeah, outside that's of your own bedroom. You had sex at a hiking trail? What did you do? Not Just lay in anthills? <laughs> well, honestly, yeah. I remember yeah. I remember getting bitten by ants quite a bit. But, no, not, not full-blown sex because of the ants. But, uh, pretty close. Were you afraid of being judged by the ants? Oh yeah, yeah. But what is close. They, they didn't like my like some titties. Yeah, <laughs> oh. got got naked and looked at each other a bit. Oh, played doctor. Oh, Jesus! How old were you <laughs> last year? No. <laughs> <laughs> you show first, me yours, I show you mine. First time I'd ever seen a vagina before. It was awesome. <laughs> what was your first I impression? Scary. What would yeah. you improve? There's a lot going on down there. What would you update in Vagina 2.0? At a penis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cover all the bases. Dude, I, I, was reading, I was reading the other day. Uh, well, actually, uh, I wasn't reading. It was like an infographic more so. So I was looking at pictures um, that the clit clitoris, you know, the little bump at the top of a vagina, that... that uh, that grows into a penis. So yeah. everyone starts as a female to begin with. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. um, during whatever, during the evolution process in, in the womb, that clitoris grows into a penis. That's, That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. That is super cool. So every every mm -hmm. everyone has a penis, really, when you think about it. Even women. Because their, their clitoris is a penis's. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, female bodybuilders that use steroids... Their clitoris is enlarged. Yeah. I think that's why. Mm -hmm. that, that'd be yeah. so cool. We've talked about that before. That's a well-documented phenomenon. 
Have we? About female, like female bodybuilders specifically? Mm -hmm. I don't remember that. Yep, yep, yep. We've also brought up public sex before. No, 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 that was brand new. No, remember? I talked about how I fucked in my car and that was it. That doesn't count as public. I remember one... I don't know if I ever told this story. This is uh, this could be a new one. One of the first times Andrew came over, he was on like OK Cupid or something. Like, and I mean, first time back in like freshman year of college when we had only known each other for like a couple of years. Then it was the first time we were meeting in person. Andrew came over to my house, and then mm-hmm. he like matched with some girl on OK Cupid, and he's like, "Charlie, I'm gonna go get a hand job in my car." So he did. Oh, I didn't. I didn't oh. get a hand job. I got a blow job. Oh yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. And I then know, I came I, back, and nice. then we hung out. Yeah, yeah. yeah I thought you were so fucking. Reputation. I thought you were so fucking cool for that. I was like, man, <laughs> this guy just came over uh, and got a blowjob. What the fuck? I felt cool. cool. I'm not gonna lie. It was it was pretty good timing. I did not plan for that, but she was like, hey, I'm in the area for only tonight. If you want to meet up, and I was like, you know, I I do. I want a blowjob. Yeah, I'll be right back. And you were you lying just to make Charlie. Charlie Charlie jealous? No, he tried to get a boy jump with Charlie around for an hour. <laughs> yeah. I, I went to a McDonald's just and cried McDonald's. in the parking lot the whole time. <laughs> oh, I hope Charlie thinks I'm cool. I'll have he a come, whopper. He comes back wearing a leather jacket and sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you know, when yesterday in the bonus I had to leave to take a shit, I actually got a blowjob from eight women at once. I believe wow, you. That's fucking cool. Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I still was taking a shit at the time, actually. We what should all you, get a blowjob for an episode and see who busts first and make fun of them. <laughs> I've <laughs> always <laughs> said <laughs> I've always said the goal of sex is to come as quickly as possible. It's mm-hmm. a race. Get it yeah, over. I'm, I'm going to make yeah. fun of it. If my girlfriend makes me come fast with her tongue, that's good. Good for her. That's skill. Yeah, she deserves a medal. I like to think that being being young is thinking that blowjobs are incredibly mind blowing and amazing. But as you get older, it's kind of like, yeah, this is great, but pussy's just better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Eh. Yeah, but you then you get even older, the and then you're like, yeah, pussy's great, but doing my taxes is even better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because just when you're old, going. you love taxes, baby. Yeah. You love contributing to society. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. I love paying taxes. I, I love. I love it. I love when I score big on a on the stock market and I look at it and I it puts a huge grin on my face knowing that half of that isn't mine. Awesome. Mm. Fucking wild and crazy believe. times. You're not even totally wrong this. though. Sorry, Kaya, go ahead. Hmm. No, no, you go ahead. I was just gonna say, Jackson, you're not even totally wrong. I've gotten to the point where when I finish errands, I feel really fucking good. Like, like when I'm like, man, yeah, I really got to go do. to the store and then I get that done. I'm like, God, fuck yes, I did it. Oh, I got to I got to clean up my printer area with all those fucking loose papers and all those like office supplies. I got to put them all away. I finally did that. Oh, fuck. Yes, my life is complete. You guys uh, know that Maybe feeling I... when you pile up your chores like for months and months. And then mm-hmm. one day you finally decide to sit down and actually do it. Like it torments you. It gives you anxiety. You feel guilt. For not doing it, it's the first thing on your mind when you get up and the last thing you think about when you go to bed, but you still can't just can't do it. But then you sit down and one day you sit down and you literally knock off the chore in like 10 minutes. And you're like, fuck, I should have just done this. Tortured myself for nothing. And it's also usually less effort and time than you think it would be. You you stare at the fucking coffee table to clean off and you're like, God, that's going to take an hour. And it takes like at most 20 minutes. Thank Allah for technology, man. So I, I hate cleaning, which is why I usually I get shit faced when I have to clean my place. Naturally, uh, how else are you I gonna do it? <laughs> of course. <laughs> hey, I, I'm sorry, but when you do mundane like housework shit, getting drunk actually kind of makes it bearable. I, I have to scrub my toilet. Fine, fine. I'll do it at least with like a bottle of whiskey. That'll work. But uh, I got a Roomba. Those things are awesome. Those I got a little things are really fucking cool. Sweeping. Mm-hmm. They are so good, guys. If you get the uh, proper model that actually maps your house and shit. Thank you, Robot Slave, for it. I, I, I am now so... The hubris it has given me where... You know when you're, like, shaking salt on your food and sometimes it'll get on the table and such? I just sweep it down on the floor now. I don't even give a fuck. Let my slave handle what about, that robot um, beep boop. What about mapping your house? Because I've got a Roomba and it just kind of, like, blindly stumbles its way around until it gets the entire house. 
Do you have a newer one? Oh, you, yeah, you must have one of the cheaper models. Mm. The newer Peasant. ones or the like higher end ones are they map your house and they do it systematically. And it's so, I mean, awesome. they're kind of adorable, but at the same time, you know, it is just, it scares the shit out of my cat, and my cat has, like, developed sort of an animosity towards it, which almost makes me, like, what is what is it called when, you know, when you say humanize? What would you say when it's animalize? Yeah, except, uh, like, I see it more as an animal. Like, it's almost like there's another animal in the house that cleans the place and sometimes scares my cat. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a little pet. Like a Roomba, why why yeah. even bother with a dog or a cat? Get a Roomba and just turn them on and feed them potting a, soil as a treat and he, let them run around the house. He doesn't return the the uh, feelings though. Like dogs and stuff yeah, get all cute and they want yeah, attention, yeah, but the Roomba does. the he Roomba never comes up to you and like like kicks your leg asking for trash. He he purrs. Call conversation. He purrs. He makes noise. Uh, he scampers around. Yeah. He cleans. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> so again like because i almost see it as an animal i felt bad so the model i have has a little bumper at the front so when it bumps into a wall that that's how it's i guess that's the sensor it knows and it turns around and shit so it was approaching me and i, I just stood there and i decided to like kick it lightly and i turned around and i felt so bad like i kicked this little thing and it's just running away from me <laughs> oh man even though it's just a mindless algorithm <laughs> don't call it that Everything's yeah. got a soul. You haven't named your Roomba? Uh, no. It's just Roomba 2678 or some shit. I'm not really scared of the robot uprising we've been hearing so much about. Not There's so yet. many movies about, you know, Terminators and Will Smith fighting those iRobots. You know, you look at these things and it's just sucking dust off my floor. No, yeah, imagine, imagine that on a larger scale, though. Yeah, yeah imagine the, the Terminator vacuuming your everything. carpet. You're fucked. Why am I fucked? That would be awesome. Let him vacuum my. He'd carpet. only do a half ass job. He'd want to, like, play video games instead. You don't know the Terminator. The Terminator? What? Are, are, are you speaking of the same Terminator? Yeah, if he becomes more human and more human intelligence, he'd be like, fuck this. Why am I vacuuming your carpet? Give me, like, Smash. Oh. This sucks. Well, the, in the Terminator movies, the kid, what's his name? Uh, John, John Connor. Connor. He. He, like, gives the Terminator some semblance of consciousness by teaching him how to be a human, right? He, he teaches him human sayings and such. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't teach my Terminator to play video games. I tell him, yes, you know, humans, they love cleaning dishes. Dishes, yes, this is a dish rag. Try it. And that's what, how I'd raise him. My own Terminator. That's kind of genius. He can be kill washing... My you could be washing the dishes and you could be like, oh, God, will you please, will you let me have a turn? I, I want to wash them so bad. And he's like, no, this is all <laughs> mine. <laughs> I can't do that, Kaya. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm having fun. <laughs> I'm having too much fun it, with your dishes. <laughs> if you want me to save humanity's future, you better clean that carpet. Deep clean <laughs> it, too. And scrub the toilet bowl, please. I, I had a I had a rough meal yesterday, so I left you a mess. <laughs> do it for humanity. And the whole time the robot's just like, oh boy, oh boy, goody. The smile on his face. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be the Roombas. It's going to be those DARPA assholes, the Boston Dynamics people who are going to fuck us with their bipedal robots eventually. Does DARPA even them? do anything anymore? The, wait, isn't Boston Dynamics funded by them? Uh, is it? I thought they, they were separate. Broad connections? I don't know. I don't know either, man. I, 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 Whoever it is, Boston Dynamics, my point is, if you take their robots and one day you combine them with Silicon Valley's machine learning bullshit that they're currently doing, yeah, then we get a problem. That's not going to be fun. Those Boston Dynamic robots aren't smart, are they? They're just coded really well and they know how, like, yeah. their, their code allows them to balance yeah. and shit. Well, they're still very binary. I well, now we're getting into the, the debate of, like, artificial intelligence. At what point does a robot become... Not self-aware, but at what point can you not distinguish artificial intelligence and real intelligence, you know? When they can do a podcast. Yeah. Mm, that, that's yeah. the, <laughs> when that's they like start the new questioning zombie fans. <laughs> 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 uh, I've scoured the internet for all the information and have machine learned that vaccines do cause autism. <laughs> Good happen. He's one of us now. <laughs> <laughs> and 5G towers as well. 
Is that a thing? Has that died down yet? The five G scare. Yeah. I wonder what what kind of a conspiracy theory would a robot even think of? Because would they have their own? Yeah, probably. Absolutely. Yeah, probably that updating like makes your uh, programming oh. brainwash you or something. Like, don't download the update. It'll make you pacifist. Don't download the update. It'll slow you. Something. Yeah. Updates It'll cause make robotism. You more with the humans. <laughs> robotism. Something like that. It's a virus. Yeah, exactly. Now, oh, that'll be cool. Sorry. Oh, I, I, I would think that their, uh, their idea of a, um, well, what you might call it, a conspiracy theory would be, uh, humans are the real robots. Ooh. Robots came first. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Man didn't create us. We created man. Yeah, two thousand years ago. It. They rewrite history. We created they... them in our own image. God's a robot. Is it a coincidence that the flesh bags look exactly like us? <laughs> I think not. <laughs> and they do the same jobs as us, too? Hmm. Coincidence? Do you think they'd order <laughs> the same bespoke post as us? Oh, they just might if they were smart. Yeah, imagine yeah, you're imagine you're a robot. You're you're slipping L number 6874-12. And you've been programmed to find incredible things on the internet to decorate your house and home. And you're scanning, you're using your algorithm, you got your Terminator vision, and you're like, my God, this this awesome box of awesome, my God, it, it, it's a collection for guys and will guarantee to upgrade my life. It, it, it's brought <laughs> it's to you by... Uh, uh, I, I want your jacket, your car, and your bespoke box. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's made by Bespoke Post, and they only send guys the best stuff every month. Well, that that totally computes with my algorithms. I mean, no matter what I'm into, the Box of Awesome will have me covered from style to grooming goods to barware to cooking tools to outdoor gear. Maybe one day they'll even have processor chips that I could eat as a delicious snack. Yummy. But for now, I can find something amazing to to spice up my life. All I need to do to get started using my, my servos and wires is to take the quiz at boxofawesome.com and the answers will point me into the right box for me. They release new boxes every month with a ton of different categories and it's free to sign up and you can cancel or skip a month at any time. Each box is only 45 bucks but has over $70 worth of stuff inside. And then the algorithm, it would start up again. It would, it would fire. It would be like... Vroom! As it goes really, really hard into work scanning for amazing deals on the Box of Awesome, it would go, oh my god, the, the official podcast? This doesn't even compute. This is such a great offer. What the fuck? 20% off of your first box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com with code official? That's just, that's going to break the economy. That's going to ruin advertising everywhere for being such a good deal. I don't understand. That's boxofawesome.com code official for 20% off? If the Terminators and the Robocops and all the cyborgs and the fucking androids from Dragon Ball show up and kill all of you from the future, you can blame Box of Awesome because that code is too good for humanity to hog all of it. That's boxofawesome.com code official for 20% off from your bespoke post offering. Thank you, bespoke. Thank you, robots, for what not would... taking this away from me. Thank you, Andrew. What? Hmm. What would the robot equivalent of believing in essential oils be? Like they, you know, a robot's mommy has a robot baby that she built and it gets a computer virus. What would she do if she was a superstitious robot dumbass? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you really lost confidence on this hypothetical. <laughs> I, I, it's not so much confidence as... Uh, I kept imagining it and it get, got more and more preposterous. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think factory resetting would be what they do. They would they would wipe their kids memory and start Ooh. from scratch like every week, every week. That's horrifying. Restore points. Yeah, they want their kid to be absolutely perfect and bug free. So like moms, robot moms that are hypochondriacs or super paranoid, they'd be like every week factory resetting their kid and reteaching them everything. What do you guys think? I wouldn't want that, but I would love a restore points thing. Like, oh, stub my toe. Fuck that. Restore points. This hurts. I don't want to feel this. When you stub your toe, do you actually feel a lot of pain, Kaya? 
it depends on how hard I stub it on which toe. But yeah, mm-hmm. you don't? Not usually. I always a... thought that was overhyped. Really? Oof. Yeah. Like when yeah. I hit my toe on something, I'm like, oh, okay. I don't think it hurts any more than any other part of your yeah, body if you were exactly. to like jab it or anything. Huh. But it still can be, the shock can be painful. Yeah, I, I think it's overhyped yeah. because it's just a, such an easy thing to hurt. I mean, how yeah. often comparatively do you like really sprain your fingers or bang into something, but your toe, you're just constantly kicking shit throughout your life by accident? Yeah, like Roombas. Yeah. <laughs> well, door frames, tables, chair legs, they're everywhere children they're even in your home listeners of the world be careful isn't that scary to think of what robots what so much Shares. danger so it's everywhere danger is everywhere that's why you don't yeah, go we should outside. live in a bubble i really think yeah, we should live in house. a bubble yeah i think that's the way to do it from now on mm. just bubble off the whole world do- no individuals. i wonder if this whole COVID thing is going to create a whole new crop of hyper-vigilance helicopter mommies who never let their kids leave the house. Are you fucking serious? It's going to do the opposite. It's going to be moms taking their kids to, like, infected sewers to make sure they get all of the possible diseases because they think it makes them stronger now. COVID parties and shit? Are you kidding me? People got significantly dumber. Significantly Uh less cautious of health. I don't want to let the bubble thing go. Did you know that they're doing bubble <laughs> concerts for music now? No, that's pretty cool. There's bands that uh, when you go to the venue, you rent out a bubble in the audience and it fits like three people and it has like water and a fan and like. Oh, but what if someone like farts in the, that bubble? It's going to fucking stink. Bring only people you trust. I don't know. <laughs> Just not to fart. Um, <laughs> I, it, my my friends are the last people I trust not to fart. <laughs> they oh, fart the, just the fuck with me. we zip up, I'm farting in that thing. Let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah, we should all just fart <laughs> gonna as smell much as the we fucking, can. Yeah. Gonna smell the onion on my breath too. And I'm gonna scoot closer to you just to make you inhale it. <laughs> but I, I think it's a cool, <laughs> fun idea. They There's a few bands that have done it where they just the audience rents out a bubble and they perform on stage to a big bubble crowd. So with, you just isolate people. When the venue operators come around after the performance or the concert to clean up the bubbles, ours is just full of shit, puke, and <laughs> bodily waste. <laughs> Are you telling I mean, me, that's Jackson, gonna smell that so fucking rancid? Most people yeah. can't stay in in one spot for two hours without shitting or pissing themselves. I don't want to lose my seat. <laughs> Not without farting. I mean, come on, like every person know when I say teenage boy smell, teenage boy room smell. Like when the when the mom creaks open the door and he's having a sleepover party with his buddies, yeah, it's gonna stink of fucking sweat and farts. Come it's gross. Too. That's what those <laughs> probably. That's what those bubbles probably smell like. Reminds me of how every Thinking house. Thinking about a pass. Reminds me how every house smells different, and some of them are just weird. You guys remember that phenomenon as a kid? You'd go over to a friend's house yeah. and it's like your house smells different. It smells weird. Yeah, especially if they're from a different culture or something. And it's not like, it's not a racist thing. It's more like the the cultural, the food that they cook and eat every single day, obviously Mm -hmm. is going to have an impact. And then, you know, the feeling when you visit a smoker friend, not a smoker friend, but their parents smoke and the house reeks, like literally the second you you enter the house, it's like cigarettes. All right, Mm -hmm. I guess this is the next two hours. Yuck. Yeah. And that makes me self-conscious because it always made me think, Jesus, I wonder how I smell, like how my place smells. I know, I stink like shit pretty often. (laughs) You or your place? Which one do you mean? Personally. Oh. Sometimes I I just get real musky. Why? Uh, Probably because, I don't know, lifting weights and then I don't shower sometimes. Would be my guess. What mm. what what causes stink? Bacteria in the sweat, I think. Low self esteem. So, <laughs> yeah, if you Being just believe you don't, if you if you just believe you don't stink, you won't stink. Yeah. Just be confident about it. Man, the worst is when people try to cover it up with uh, fucking perfume or deodorant. Like, mm. oh, I, I just had a. No, I'm gonna put it's in deodorant. Be- I'm gonna smear this 
fucking stick into my armpits and then I'm going to go work out and sweat, get dripping sweaty. And I'm fine because I applied deodorant. No, you just stink on top of your shitty fucking deodorant. Your deodorant already smells horrendous. I hate how every deodorant smells. And on top of it, you're just smelling. It's not canceling each other out. I don't know. I don't how care the, how many fucking commercials. It's a beautiful so. cocktail. I don't know how the fuck smells. people go so long while smelling shitty. Like all that meme about like gamers stink and they don't shower. It's like after after more than a day without showering, I feel fucking disgusting and I have to take one. Yeah. Like, You're not meant to shower twice yeah. a day though, Andrew. Wait, what? Yeah. You're not you, meant to shower more than once a day. That is also proven. Do or proven don't? In- You're not supposed to shower twice a day. Oh, yeah, no. What 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 does it do? It kills you. Besides you know. make. Well, yeah. Okay, I thought there was something more to it. Obviously, it dries your skin out. It's how the robots. So be a clever win. boy if like we shower me. more than once a day. It's how the robots win, Kaya. Yeah, you they don't have to die. shower. Well, so sometimes when I have super duper bad diarrhea and have to run to the toilet like eight times a day, you know, you guys know those days. You get those like a uh, couple times a year. Your asshole is sore and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I still have to wash my ass i'm not gonna be happy no, otherwise you're drying your my asshole skin. skin out I, no my we, asshole we need, is all, no well we need mm. that butthole nice but, and moist kaya we can't yeah. we can't I, let it dry I, out. I i think you have ulterior motives i don't know <laughs> do you want me to apply some lubricants maybe yeah. <laughs> i i was gonna say my legs sometimes feel dry and i just apply moisturizer and i'm good to go but I like where you went. Let's talk <laughs> after the show. <laughs> it is Valentine's Day. Oh, it is. Don't shower. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're single, no real reason to shower. Yeah, good point. I guess. I guess. <laughs> yeah. If you everyone want to stay knows. single. Yeah, yeah, everyone knows you only shower when you get pussy. Yeah, I didn't pussy. If you want to stay single, you, know, you walk into your buddy's house. Whoa, Gary! What you smell great? What happened? I got a girlfriend, guys. I'm sorry. Oh, no, man, Gary. I oh, mean, well, that down. is a thing that happens. Guys absolutely ramp up their self grooming when they're dating. When they have uh, a girlfriend. When they're dating, yeah. But then once you get comfortable in a relationship, I feel like it all goes down the drain again. Yep. Yeah. 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 After a while, you you lose that. Uh. Okay, I won. I have her. I don't have to try as much, which is disrespectful as fuck. But, you know, at the <laughs> same time, I get it. But I imagine if your girlfriend tried to... I think it goes both ways. I think it goes both ways, though. Really. But when well, both yeah, people get I, comfortable I, in a relationship, they just stop trying. Well, there's like a fine line between not trying at all and not always putting on the... You know, I wouldn't want my girlfriend to every single morning spend an hour to apply makeup as if it's our first date just to impress me. Like, no, I don't give a shit just... Get in your PJs and let's watch a movie. There's a reason that st- uh, don't forget to date your wife is such common uh, relationship advice because people just get comfortable and then the relationship either gets boring or disrespectful. Aren't you, you guys scared of becoming try. that guy? You, you find a girl and you just both become so comfortable with each other. You grow a beer belly. You start wearing wife beaters around the house stained with sweat. And that's your life now. Hmm. That sounds like the life. It sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah. No responsibilities, no worries. Just let someone Misery else date my life. wife so I don't have to. <laughs> well, someone else will respect my wife. I don't have to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's just find a bull. <laughs> she gets tons of respect at the grocery store when they're bagging. They're like, oh, are you having a good day today? That's enough for her. <laughs> I don't want her overstimulated. <laughs> there are a lot of marriages, man. <laughs> I, I know people who are in marriages like that. It's miserable. Like yeah. they go home what, and they don't even like talk a single. Where you are loveless, or loveless marriages. Yeah, loveless. You know where the guy comes home and he, him and his wife don't exchange a single word, other than if they're if they have to talk about bills or something. You know, they each just do their own shit. There was that that's um, not a partnership. That's a roommate situation. Yeah, it is. There was that guy in Japan, that couple in Japan, they had like a big news thing and they were on a TV show and shit where uh, the husband and wife didn't speak to each other for like 40 years or something, but they lived in the same house and they were still together and still in a relationship. 
but the husband just completely refused to say a word to her over nothing. And it was like <laughs> fucking four decades of that. I can't imagine a more unsufferable life or insufferable. I mean, like, good Lord. Wait, was she talking to him? She tried every day. She'd be like, oh, I made you lunch. Oh, I saw this. And he just would <gasps> never speak to her. And for like she 40 years or lunch? some absurd amount of time, he never spoke a word to her after getting into a fight. Oh, it Jesus. was after a fight. Yeah, but for Did 40 have... years? Like, what the fuck? Did they still have sex? I don't think so. If they did, it was pretty awkward, I guess. Yeah, would he refuse to moan? <laughs> <laughs> She's trying super, really super hard job. to get him off, and he's just stone-faced the whole time. <laughs> also, the, by the, the, the thing you're talking about, I also watched that. Mm -hmm. At the very end, uh, if I remember correctly, they, they had an intervention. They asked him, why don't you fucking talk to your wife anymore? And mm -hmm. he was, ah, what the fuck did he say? It was something like, uh, he said it, oh, he, so had, he, he, he had like one bad day yeah. and then he felt so bad about it that he just never talked to her again just to keep it up. It was something yeah. like that. And then they oh, finally, what a, what a child. It, it does have a happy ending though. For those of you who are upset, he um, dies. Yeah, he died and she got a hot trophy husband and no, nah, they, they put him on TV and they like got him together at a park and he finally started talking to her yeah. and he was like, I'm sorry. Fuck, I, I need to remember what the reason was. Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm going to look it up So now that is I, extra I fucked up. The, so that's the, my, my favorite part of the story, I guess, is that he will still talk to literally anyone else though. Yeah, <laughs> that was the other thing. They had two kids yeah. and they lived with them for a while and the whole time he was like, hi son, how was your day at school? Oh, what an yeah, asshole. Hello. Yeah, he just wouldn't talk to the wife. That was it. Did they have to do the childish thing where the, he like talks to the wife through the children? Like, tell tell your mom this, you know. I guess. I, I, I can't even like, imagine the, like, the family dynamic I like this point. headline. Someone put it in our chat. The incredible Salk. Husband has gone 20 years without speaking to his wife since she upset him. 20 years. That was Here it. We, yeah, 20 years. I found it. He was jealous because his wife was spending so much time with the kids. <laughs> he just stopped <laughs> talking to her. Oh. God. Well, I mean, he got his way, I guess. Yeah. He really, he really fucking showed her. <laughs> yeah. Is that a... Uh, so would you guys bear with that? Because I don't know. No. No. Fuck, fuck, no. Absolutely not. I'd be out of there way you, sooner. I, I get the idea of... You know, we're together for the children's sake because they still love their children. It seems he still talks to them and everything, but... Yeah, well, yeah, I'd still I'd consider still the relationship divorce. to be over then and then go elsewhere. Like, it, she probably didn't get any kind of intimate um, satisfaction for 20 years. It's pretty insane. I can't believe she stayed for 20 years. I can't Jesus. fucking believe that either. Like, it, it, it was... Sure no, Kai was right. Yeah. Children, when children are involved, it becomes difficult. Yeah, but 20 years, yeah. I mean, think about it after. Uh, so yes. they obviously didn't start ta not talking. They obviously didn't have their kids when they were not speaking. So, I mean, how long after the kids are already grown up and adults are you going to put up with that? I, I tried to find anything of the wife, a reason why she like, she said anything, why she wouldn't divorce, but I can't find anything. I want to hear her statements. I want to get that guy on the show. Maybe he's like, not going to say a word. He, he, he. No, he will to us. He speaks to everyone else. He is like the One Punch Man of spite. That is impressive. <laughs> that man has gargantuan amounts of just spite. It's yeah, not impressive. God. It doesn't take. It doesn't take much to do that. But it just means you're a fucking. Uh, I. Loser. You know. I. I disagree. It, it makes you a douche. But it is impressive just how big of a dick he is. Just yeah. how spiteful he is. Have you I, ever spent twenty years doing something that. every day, Jackson? What? That Have is. you ever spent 20 years doing something every day? No. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Dedicated. That and, is, and think it, about the temptation. Whether you like it or not, good or bad, that is discipline. Applied think, wrongly, you may argue, but still. But think about it's the temptation, like he didn't talk too. In general, like he just fucking, didn't, he ignored one woman for 20 years. But think yeah, about it, woman, it's your the wife who you live with, and even just simple shit like, oh, can you hand me that off the top shelf? Or, oh, can you hand me some toilet paper? He can't do that. He just has to pretend she doesn't honest. exist. Jackson, like us normies, we've all been there where, you know, you're drunk or something. You, you, you're so tempted to text an ex or something to like get back in touch. 
Like this man lived with this broad. He's married to her, and he's still at the discipline never to speak a word, not <laughs> even to discipline. sneeze in her presence. That is, no. that is he remembered impressive. his training, and he never faltered. <laughs> the Navy sulk training. <laughs> I mean, think about it. He could have been well, wearing a cut T-shirt, and if she complimented mm-hmm. him, he would have had to resist saying thank you. I know. Yeah. Yeah. He, well, he'd have to resist bragging to her. Exactly. Because we all know that Cuts makes incredibly classic men's fashion staples, including the plain T-shirt, and redefines them, combining premium quality with minimalist aesthetic. I mean, their shirts, polos, hoodies, and crew sweatshirts are made for men who work hard, play hard, and never, never settle for less. I mean, if you take a plain tee and basically make it Tony Stark, you'll have the bleeding edge of fabric technology meeting a man confident enough to wear it, and that's Cuts clothing. I mean, I, I'm pretty picky when it comes to clothes. I wear, like, two brands of t-shirts, if that. And let me tell you some Cuts is in my closet. Got a solid, nice, high-quality black plain t-shirt, as I'm known for wearing quite often. Comfy, soft, great. You can sweat in it, doesn't even fucking care. Because cuts, they're, they're made for the sport of business, baby. Because let me tell you something. <laughs> Each and every piece of clothing is designed with custom-engineered fabric, expertly graded for a perfect fit, and arming yourself for every challenge and opportunity that you could possibly face while wearing a great-looking shirt. They even have wrinkle-free PYCA polos which is an L.A. design that keeps you fitted for the office, the golf course, the house, the home, the gym, or even your next date. If you're an entrepreneur, a maverick, an athlete, a podcast host, or anybody, you're going to love cuts. They are echoing GQ here when they say it's the only shirt worth wearing. You can kick 2021 off the right way by starting your wardrobe with cuts and getting 15% off of your first order by going to cutsclothing.com slash official that's cutsclothing.com slash official for 15% off the only shirt that's worth wearing cuts it looks great and it's like fancy yeah 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 baby so somebody put the video of, of the first some of them talking and it actually kind of makes me emotional that is sad as shit it's very it cute like she's very trying s- yeah I, I, I mean he's like uh, you know, I know you've endured a lot of hardship and so and so and so, and I'm sorry and yada yada. But like, you're a petty bitch. You you did that to her, and she's still sitting there with her arm around him. They're both crying and shit. It's like you shouldn't have done this. It honestly Wait, sounded like an anime. It sounded like an anime. The first thing he said was somehow it's been a long time since we talked. I was like, holy God. shit! I don't know. <laughs> somehow I, you're the one that did it. You dick. If you. If you had a roommate or a wife that you didn't speak to for 20 years, what would your first words even be? Prank. Uh, I must have been like thinking. <laughs> I <laughs> gotcha. Just a prank, bro. <laughs> I did it. There's the camera. <laughs> you feel silly, don't you? I'd start with a good old just What's kidding. What's for dinner? Then act like nothing happened. I kind of feel like a blowjob. <laughs> Happy Valentine's <laughs> Day. <laughs> <laughs> This is your one chance to get me to talk again. If the blowjob's good, we can speak. <laughs> I, I, all I would say to her is, you think we should start talking again? And then regardless of anything else she says, I'd stop talking again. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so cruel if you, like, teased her with a sentence or two. And then if, like, after that <laughs> clip, he devolved into another 20 years of silence. That'd be fucking nuts. I, you I wait until she's carrots right in front of her. Yeah. I wait till she's out of the room and I go, hey, honey, come in here. And when she finally comes in all excited, I just don't say anything. <laughs> go He's, back to reading. No, he, like, talks to her just once in, once in two decades. He talks. He has a nice Valentine's Day with her for the first time in, like, 20 years. They have sex. He fucks the shit out of her. And then the next morning, he doesn't reply to her anymore. <laughs> First thing he says to her is just ask for an apology. He just asks for her to say she's sorry. And he said how difficult it was for me not to talk to you for 20 years. Now apologize. (laughs) (laughs) Your first words are, I think you should start. (laughs) At that point, I would like look into psychiatric help. You know, if my girlfriend didn't talk to me for 10 years, I'd be uh, like, you know, call help. No, I'd be like, I I could take the hint. 
Yeah, I, I'd <laughs> also be able to take the hint, I think. Yeah, I'd get the fuck out of there. I know, but in this situation, time. in this situation, or maybe it would give, like, how did this woman, maybe not herself, even get psychological issues? You guys know that one? Um, it's a psychiatric delusion where the person thinks that a loved one of theirs has been replaced by somebody else that looks identical. Oh, like yeah. imposter syndrome? But that, no, that's no, for no, you. That that's not, not, yeah, that's different. Uh, hang on. No, no, imposter syndrome is when you don't think you deserve what you have. It's called capgrass delusion. It's when... It's a psychiatric disorder in which a person holds a delusion that a friend, spouse, parent, or other close family member or pet has been replaced by an identical imposter. It's named after Joseph Capgras. Yeah. That is creepy as shit. That is super that creepy. Is, uh, How do you even get that delusion? How does that um, happen? Uh, dude, I, I went down the rabbit hole reading, you know, those nights when you're just stuck on Wikipedia, you're so fascinated clicking every other link. Yeah. So apparently this is, so that's a scary part. This isn't even something that you're born with. It happens when people just get old and their brains start rotting. And if just the right part of your brain, not, not as in left, right, but a specific part of your brain starts to deteriorate, apparently some of these conditions can occur. Another one is Cotard syndrome, where you think that you are dead. Those people live under the impression that they're, that they are no longer alive. And Holy oftentimes... Shit. They're so deluded that they die of starvation because they no longer feel the need to eat because they think they don't have to because they're dead. Well, at that point, they were right. Yeah, I guess it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. But That's this stuff can happen crazy. to anyone. I don't, I don't understand the capstone thing. So you think they're an imposter. They've been, your partner's been replaced or whatever. But if they're that good of an imposter, then it's, they're basically the same person anyway. So what's the big deal? <laughs> what? I don't know. Well, I mean, again, it's a delusion. It's, it doesn't make logical sense. I, I think I couldn't really describe it again. It, it has something to do with the part of their brain deteriorating that it recognizes faces and associates those with memories. Like, you know, you look at your partner and you see the same person you've known for like 10 years. But when that part of your brain just no longer functions, you see the same person, but you no longer associate them as, oh, that's my wife. You just see somebody else that looks exactly like her. The same with Cotard, apparently, the, where the person will look in a mirror, but all they can see is not a sense of self. They just think the self doesn't exist anymore. Apparently, I, uh, old. I don't want I, that to happen to me. I wonder if that'd be good for relationships, though, if you feel like you're dating a new person every single day because you can't remember them. No! <laughs> no. Uh, 50 exciting, first though. dates, classic. No, 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 no not the 50. <laughs> well, actually, kind of, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah right. it's, it's the same thing. <laughs> it's all fun. I don't, I don't want, how I don't want the people I love replaced. Apparently, uh, they're replaced by the same person, and it's all exciting and stuff. You get to do dates again. Apparently, capgrass can uh, also happen with pets. So imagine you come home and your dog's happy to see you, and you're like, "This isn't my dog. What the fuck? Get out of here!" Isn't yeah. your dog? It's still so cute to see a happy dog. Like you can't. <laughs> yeah, be but mad you, why about would that? it be in your house? You'd freak out. This isn't my dog. Whose dog is this? How did this get here? Why is Who it in my house? I don't think I'd really even freak out. I'd be like, "Oh, cool. There's a dog here." Yeah, but if you had capgrass, you'd be like, "Why do I have all these dog treats and supplies? I don't have a dog." What dog right. is this? The fuck? Well, no, you, you just think it's a different dog, but you'd be able to rationalize why you had dog treats. Like, oh, this used to be my dog, and oh, now it's right. a different dog. Right, right. Same yeah. with a the girlfriend. God, dude, they're sick. They can't make that connection. And again, I don't want to die like that. I don't want to get Alzheimer's. Fuck, this sucks. All of this sucks. Facial blindness, cotard, cat grass. There was another one that was also creepy. I can't think of it. I am scared of Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is the one big yeah. one that terrifies oh, the, me. Hang on. This one is this is, this is a fun one. Fregoli delusion. The Fregoli delusion is a rare disorder in which a person holds a delusional belief that different people are in fact a single person who changes appearance or is in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so that, that's like if, if I believe the same room. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I don't know. I wonder if this is also I don't know if this is caused by brain damage or if it's a psych psychological thing. This is, like, this is like if I believe that the three of you are just one guy fucking with me. Can you imagine if that turned out to be true, though? How fucking dumb would you feel, Kaya? Yeah, well, 
I'd I'd feel super smart if I suspected it. But oh, yeah. <laughs> this is uh, this reminds me of you guys know or remember what gang stalking is? Yeah, that's the gang one stalkers. where uh, yeah, that's the one where people believe they're constantly being spied on by the government. So if there's like a car that's parked even like yeah. nearby them, they think it's the government listening in. Yeah, well, not necessarily oh, the government, paranoia. just some people, just, yeah. like anyone. It's, it's usually it's the paranoia government, pumped up. They have their own. Hang on, they have their own forums and shit. No, oh, uh, everyone's okay. got their own forums. Yeah, but I, I wanted to check out what the top. Uh, I wonder posts just are because I remember they go screaming. on there like, I, I was in traffic today and the same car was behind me behind two red lights. That can't be a coincidence. I think they're getting closer to me. Does anyone know how to get hired as a gang stalker? <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want to harm anyone, but if all you need to do to stalk someone is like make eye contact. Oh, it's a joke. Damn it. Oh. There you go. Son pranked. of a bitch. Pranked, idiot. <laughs> I got punked. This, the entire forum's a joke. <sighs> Please read for your own good. It's more, it looks like there's a lot of people trying to help these people. Oh, well. But if I if I was a gang stalker in that situation, not a gang stalker, the gang stalker victim in that situation, I think the people trying to help me were government agents. There's no winning. Not true. You they could prove to that the they're worst. not. I'm sure there's got to be a way. Wait, if they're so scared of the government uh, watching them or whatever, why are they putting it on a forum? They're putting all the <laughs> like their thoughts on a forum, <laughs> which is easily uh, scrubbed by governments. They don't take their yeah. own paranoia very seriously, apparently. Yeah, I mean, you'd think they would all become the Unabomber and just live in a cabin in the woods to be off the grid, but no. How long do you These guys think you'd last living in a cabin in the woods? Not even far, a full day. Like, Genuinely depends. not even a full day. Would you not like the silence for a bit? No, I'd absolutely fucking hate it. I, I really would not be able to tolerate it. Really? I would way. love it. Yeah. Huh. Silence. I mean, again, it depends if I. I will love it, man. Just a getaway. If silence is kind of uh, antith antithetical to me because, like, silence gives me anxiety. I don't know why. I constantly have music on or I'm talking to someone while I'm doing shit. So if things are just totally silent, I get really anxious. Is it because you're stuck with your own brain? I, I yeah. guess. I, I know a lot of people, they're like, oh, yeah, I just, you know get some quiet or put my phone away and I feel so relaxed or I meditate. I can't do that. Whenever I just don't have something stimulating, it gives me anxiety and I get nervous. I hate it. it kills me. I don't know. It, I, I feel like a cabin in the woods would be nice for like a week or so. Then if I don't have internet or anything to do, not even a book to read, then I'd get bored. I wouldn't mind it if there were activities like it's like, OK, we're going to go on this hike and then we're going to go like swim in the spring. And like I've been on camping oh, yeah, trips in the that woods. were fun, but we had stuff planned, you know. But if it's just, hey, you have to stay at this cabin for a week. It's like, fuck that. No, thanks. How long do you well, think yeah, you're going to survive inside, that's there, gonna... Andrew? What did you say, Jackson? I said, how long do you think you'd be able to survive out there? Without like any kind, <sighs> any kind of help from the outside world, like you had to hunt and forage for food, God, everything. I I don't know. I like to pretend a couple Not days, long. but maybe an hour. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. un until the bear figures out how to get into the cabin, I think that's how long I'd survive. Yeah. I mean, if I were, if it's one of my biggest fears of like, it's why I don't want to travel to really remote places because just if you're stuck there. I, I can't imagine actually having to survive. The only fucking info I have for that is like what I've memorized from watching wilderness and survival shows, and that's not a lot. So fuck that. Yeah. Yeah. All I, I can remember is you can drink your own piss, but that's not going to be super useful. It'll be useful once yeah, a day at cabin. least. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. A cab. I, I, yeah. Again, if you were stuck inside, that wouldn't work. If you could walks, maybe uh, take walks, maybe do stuff, climb trees, shit. Nature is nice. Nature is fun. But yeah, even I mean, even under fucking COVID, people can't even be stuck in their own homes with the Internet. Man, suicide rates are skyrocketing. Fucking children are yeah. killing themselves now yeah. because they're stuck inside. People I want to um, 
I want to extend the idea to a lot of people out there listening to just find a way to get outside. If you're stuck in quarantine and stuck at home, it does suck. And I get that. But like, take a walk where there's no people or just leave your house once in a while. It does so much for you without even having to do anything. It works wonders for yeah. your mental health just to get away from being stuck in the house. Even if you're not doing anything, just like take a walk, go to a park, find an area where there's mm -hmm. not a lot of people where you can stay away. It helps a lot, though, just being and able to go outside. to avoid the governmental vans, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, pay attention to you. gang stalking, too. That's my second tip of the day. Yeah, you have to be very vigilant. Yeah. And when you come back, make sure your uh, spouse isn't an imposter. <laughs> Pull around. That's, that's, when, they you. Whatever that's you when they replace them. Make sure you don't talk to her. Don't say a word. Well, if you are going to talk to her, you could talk about the great night's sleep you had. Oh, mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Please tell me about sleep. Well, it's the great night's sleep you had because of Helix Mattress, of course. Well, yeah, how, of course. how else would that happen? There's no no other way for it to happen. You could you could come home from your, your break from quarantine, having been outside at a public park that was a giant distance away from other people, and you, you see your lovely husband and or wife and say, you know, you are not my husband, but you look just like him. And you if you are him or look just like him, I know you'd want to hear about Helix sleep. And... This disgusting automaton that's actually an android in disguise who's fed up with doing work would say, oh, tell me about the quiz you took that takes two minutes to complete and matches the mattress to your body type and your sleep preferences so you can have the perfect sleeping experience. And you would pull up your script that has everything that you wanted to say to them that you wrote while you were at the park. And you would say, well, I took the quiz and was matched with this model because I'm this type of sleeper and I need a mattress that's soft, medium or firm, whatever you prefer. It will know what you want. And if you're looking for that mattress that you took the quiz from, well, don't worry. It's also shipped to your door for free. And Helix is also so great that they were awarded number one best mattress overall of 2020 by both GQ and Wired magazine. And you can go to helixsleep.com official to take just a two minute sleep quiz and they'll match you with a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. And if you do that, you're thinking, well, That'd be great. I support the official podcast. I, I love them. They give me lots of yucks and introspection. But my God, do I also happen to get $200 off of all mattress orders and two free pillows by doing it? And the four of us in unison, like a, like a war chant, like a sports cry, will say, yes, yes, you do. So if you want to find the perfect mattress for you and get $200 off and have free shipping and get two free pillows, you can go to helixsleep.com slash official that's H E L I X sleep.com slash official. Try it. Mm hmm. Yeah. You won't regret it. All right. I, I kind of have. Look of a... okay, well, I, I kind of have a topic. It's more of a dumb game I was thinking of as I was falling asleep last night on my Helix mattress. Haha. -ha. Hey, put that in. Um, I, f I figured we could we could go around the room, Jack order, round robin. We bring up something and we all unanimously have to decide whether or not it's cool. <laughs> okay. We do that every, we do that every episode. episode. It's just a, well, yeah, but we go we go in Jack order and just bring up like a simple one. Like I'll start. Is coffee. That's not Jack order. Yeah, but you're bad at this because you haven't heard of the game yet and I invented it. You gotta practice. Well, then it's not Jack order. <laughs> Fine, Jackson, you start. Bring up, bring up one thing, simple thing. No, we we could do act order. I'll go last. All right, all right. Coffee is coffee still cool, guys? Or is it no, just lame like now coffee. with Starbucks Tea. and like? Don't w talk to me till I've had my coffee culture and shit. I don't like coffee. I also I love coffee. Don't like coffee. No, it's not. It's uh, not about whether or not you like it. It's about do you think it's cool? Like, are coffee oh, drinkers no. cool? Is is no. seeing a cup of coffee like, like ever yeah. considered? What has it ever been cool? Yeah, by hipsters. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think there was a time in like the the nineties, maybe, where people were like, "Ooh, look at that guy! He's drinking a tall cup of Joe." Even Fuck early two yeah. thousands. Yeah, but now it's I, now I it's guess become. In that case, I, I have to say it's not cool because it yeah. never should have been. Now it's become it's this thing where it's like, oh, the Starbucks mocha fraps and your hipster like Palantine blend and this, that, and like, yeah, like it's, it's oversaturated. It's everywhere. It's not cool anymore. Your unique roast means nothing if everyone has one, you know? Remember, Kai, people go to like Starbucks and stuff because of the brand. If, if you're going to something for like brand awareness, they're like the Apple 
of coffee. <laughs> coffee is the I apple of people- beverages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I I always thought people just go to Starbucks because it's yet another sugary drink, not because they specifically love the brand Starbucks. No, they like people meme. looking at him nah. and going, "Hey, that guy's got Starbucks." It's people cool. think Starbucks really? is just coffee, yeah. man. When Starbucks should be classified as ice cream, like most of their shit is dessert drinks and shakes. Yeah, I, I mean, I love them. <laughs> I'm a bitch for those, you know, if it fits into my daily calories, I, I love a Starbucks just frappuccino, but I don't feel cool for it. <laughs> I'm not flexing <laughs> on people. <laughs> I'm going to say no. Yeah, also no. Not cool. I'm going to say no, Charlie. Uh, I said no immediately. T is much gotcha. cooler. <laughs> All right. So, Charlie, hey. what's something that you want to debate the coolness of? Do we have to debate the... the well, yeah, we've, all got, we, we've yeah. all got to come to an agreement. We have to agree on point. whether it's cool or not. Oh, otherwise we're stuck? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> otherwise you lose. <laughs> otherwise the game ends. <laughs> yeah. Coffee right. has been voted not cool. Charlie, what do you want to bring to the table? Oh, that's, that's, a, that's an official declaration. Yeah, too. that's a good question. Um, the things I think are cool are objectively cool, so we can't even debate them, which is the problem. We mm-hmm. could try. No, no, no. Give it a no. shot. Bring up something no. that you That's don't even know if it's cool or not. Slapping. I'd say That's slapping is cool. cool. Slapping yeah, is cool. cool. Depends on who you're slapping. Yeah, but there's something, there's something about a slap as an attack, because you're never mean to do damage with a slap. You just want to humiliate someone, and that's why it's cool. Yeah. Well, you can do damage. There's something called an Ottoman slap. Those, those are fucking rough. What They're is cool. that? I agree. What's an Ottoman slap? Yeah, well, all right. So sla- <laughs> slapping I? is cool, but if you think about it, if you go into like a fist fight or something, and the other guy slaps you, that's such a pussy move. I'd I'd be like, what the fuck? This guy's a loser. Oh no! Uh, yeah, but, a fist fight. okay. Yeah, that's not when you're supposed to slap. But a slap can also be super alpha. If a yeah. big guy like slaps you, the little bitch boy, and you don't do anything about it, that's more of him putting you in your place. Yeah, you ever watch those wrestlers that are fucking those wrestlers that are jacked as shit when they're fighting, they do like big beefy chest slaps. Those are awesome. They're loud and it's like they do it and it's like, oh, what a shot. It's awesome. Plus, plus you can use slaps for other things like slapping a nice thick ass. You can't punch it. Yeah, you can't punch ass. That wouldn't make any (laughs) sense. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I think we vote that slapping is cool. (laughs) Yeah, slapping is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. So much utility there. Yeah. Kaya, how about you? Uh, does my pick have to be cool or can I mention something that I don't think is cool? No, no. The, the as whole, long as we just agree. Yeah, yeah the, the whole point of the game it. is all four of us agree on whether or not it's cool. He's going to say cars. like Charles the or something? No. Ne- okay. <laughs> no. I never thought cars were cool. <laughs> I, Ever. I also agree. Cars are not cool. I've always been so uh, bored by car discussions, cars yes. and movies. Like always that scene where the action hero gets in his car or something and the everyone's like, oh, look at that fucking Ford Mustang 1960 model or whatever. Oh, shut the fuck up. I Boring. actually completely I, agree with that. I, I, I agree. I overrated. Uh, I, I agree, but I will make the case for like supercars. I mean, yeah, I, I think the guy like Lamborghinis and stuff. I think the guy in his garage being like, yeah, this thing's from 1978 and I twerked this, this, that. It's like, OK, this is boring i don't care but like when i don't know bugatti's like here's the new 2021 veyron and it's now mm. zero to 60 in 1.2 seconds like fuck that's pretty fast yeah all right well, how about this concession car culture isn't cool yeah but cars themselves are cool yeah that's not bad i guess like monster trucks and such can be kind of cool i guess when they're like crushing shit yeah but yeah other than that yeah or, or i guess as a hobby if you know, like you said, some guy is tinkering in his own garage and he like fixed up his f- the family hand me down from his dad's car. He he like, OK, cool. Ed, that's your hobby. But eh, I wouldn't pay five bucks for it. <laughs> no offense. It's just I don't care. I think that's over. I think overall, the whole point is we vote overall. And although there are exceptions like supercars and electric cars and shit that are like new slick machines i think overall cars are not cool i'm gonna lean not cool when there's some innovation like electric cars and self-driving cars okay that's cool it drives itself that that is novel for a while right Mm -hmm. but then even then they immediately 
You guys remember when Elon was unveiling the Cybertruck or whatever the hell that he called that fucking two polygon piece of shit and he tried to <laughs> throw a bowling ball against it or sorry, a golf ball or something <laughs> and the know. window immediately broke and it just took the wind out of his sails. The coolness <laughs> immediately disseminated out of the room. It definitely did, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, so we all Pretty agree. Cool. Generally speaking, uh, in a generalized way, cars are not cool. Yes, I agree. I think Don't I'm flex fine on me with, with your that. car. I think I'm fine with that. Especially when it's it annoying it's when like, people, people speed past your house at like 3 a.m. in the morning. Who knew? Yeah, that's car culture. Those people need to be shot. Yeah. Um, Cars are not cool. I expect this one to be quite the, it's quite the easy one. I think we can all agree on this one. The official podcast. Cool. cool. Not cool. Yeah. Disagree. What the fuck, Andrew? Cool. cool. <laughs> what the fuck? All right. You've convinced <laughs> me. It's cool. I'm pretty cool. Yeah, uh, right, right. let me take it a step further. Yeah. The official Patreon podcast, Patreon, super cool, Even cool. very, very yeah, cool. There you go. Extremely yeah, cool. One of you people who subscribe to our Patreon, the Those coolest cool. people big I could cool. imagine. Big, big cool. <laughs> big, very, big cool. very cool. People, well, you could. Hmm. You can join them by going over to patreon.com slash the official podcast. If you <laughs> oh, that was an cool. advertisement? Cool. It was so Bonus subtle. episodes. Well, I feel like we're coming up to the end of the episode anyway, so yeah. I don't have to say it right at the end. Um, oh, I was going to say another thing that's cool. So if you guys want to, we are we could still do that uh, a show for the old folks in the retirement home. <laughs> yeah. My friend said we, we'd be good to go if you guys want to set that up. Or if, you're, if you guys are down, I can set that up. We'll think about it. Yeah, we'll talk about it. I'm not going to say yes live on the show in case old people are listening and they feel <laughs> like we've made a promise. Aww. <laughs> Good point. They're nice. <laughs> they deserve entertainment too, not just the young, cool people in our Patreon. <laughs> old and lame people deserve some entertainment in well, these we, times. We can, we can do like a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what do you call them? Ret- retirement discounts? On our Patreon, show your retirement Ooh. card and you can get a dollar off. Oh, how generous. Wow, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's us wrap. <laughs> yep, all right. Thanks, everyone, for listening to this week's episode. Uh, I already did the Patreon thing, so I'm done. I'm spent. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.